Welcome, welcome, welcome to Red Zone in the Lab podcast. I am Deuce. Appreciate everyone for coming through. Appreciate everyone for stopping by. Today's show, we're going to be talking to Logan Paulson. Yes, Logan Paulson is going to be doing some Q&As. Um, you can put it in the chat. Uh, if you want to come up to ask him a question personally, just hit me on Twitter. Right now, I have... I've, I have instant access to Twitter or in the group chat if you want to specifically come up to ask him a question. So you'll ask him a question and then we will get to the next person. But if you want to come up, just let me know. Logan's going to be here uh, any time now. So on the other side of this, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the news between yesterday and today with the roster cut, practice squad and all those things. Moving forward on the other side of this. This is Hog Farmer Chris and the 2022 Commanders Fan of the Year. Before you listen to Red Zone in the Lab podcast, I want to thank you for your support and bringing awareness to the Hog Farmers Charitable Foundation, which helps children and their families affected by pediatric cancer. You truly make a difference. And with that being said, please don't forget to subscribe to the podcast on YouTube. Yo, what up, what up, what up, what up, what up? Um, again, appreciate all of you for stopping by. Uh, Cody was good. Jay in the building was good. All right, Trill, we got you. Right-handed Steve Young, we might open it all off with that, right? My man Slim is in the building. Uh, my man T. Prez is in the building. Glenn is in the building. Kamish is in the building. Um, we appreciate all y'all, man, again, for, for stopping in for sure. I see you, Kim. Miss Janet is in the building. Um, some other people are starting to log on. My man Dustin is here. Um, what's good? Hell Skins. Yes, it's about to get started. Uh, Logan is on his way in. Um, if y'all can do me a favor and just uh, tweet out, uh, share it wherever you are. Um, please share it out. I get more people in here uh, while we talk to Logan Paulson about the team. Uh, I see you, uh, Carlton. Carlton, I see you. I see you, D. Mitty, Chase Radar is in the building, Austin is Sports. Steve's in the building. Hope I ain't missing nobody, man. Appreciate all the love, all the love for y'all coming in, man. Um, uh, Logan is is, is 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 on his way in for sure. And um, yeah, man. So uh practice squad, my man Jake Fromm is back. Um, I'm, I'm definitely <laughs> happy about that, right? Jake Fromm is back. Um, but yeah, man, so let's, let's get straight to it. And that's right. Smash the like button and subscribe. It should be right there on your screen. Please subscribe to the podcast and our guest for this evening, Logan Pawson. How you doing, buddy? I'm good, dude. How are you, man? Doing good. Hanging in there. It's, it's been, it's, it's, it's been, uh, 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 a busy time for you these last couple months. Right. It has been the past couple of weeks, been very busy with the start of season. I'm sure busy for you too, being, uh, you know, having the podcast and having to keep up with all the commander stuff, but yeah, man, um, it's an exciting time to be affiliated with the commanders, you know, for the first time in a while, which is great. So I'm yeah. um, excited to talk, you know, the new roster, the new guys, all that kind of yeah. stuff. So, <laughs> yeah, so let's, let's get to it. And, and yeah. And congratulations, right. Um, uh, with the new show, pregame post game with, yeah, thank you. Uh, v Mitch and, and, um, and um santana so yep uh that's good you you guys get to work together <laughs> I, I i can't wait man like <laughs> it's just like the, the the dynamic especially with with you and santana and and smooth and those guys yeah, it's just you all out, just works so out of control smooth. man yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right man so this is how we're gonna do it um of course they're gonna put some questions in in um in the chat and if anyone want, want to come on screen we definitely going to um, have him come up to ask some questions, but but my man Trail, right? He is very high on Sam Howe. I mean, okay. very very high. Um, on Twitter, uh, it was a, a little poll of him and Smoot um, uh, when we drafted Forbes because he's very high, oh, yeah. high <laughs> on Forbes too. He's been like he's been ten toes down, doesn't care. He had expectations, but. This is his question to you. 
He wants you to know how do you feel about how being compared as a right-handed Steve Young. <laughs> you know, um, I always think these pair these player comparisons are so interesting because like they, you know, there are some qualities that you like, right? You like the mobility, you like the arm strength, you like kind of the moxie that Steve Young and Bo Sam Howell played with. But to me, they're very different players. And it's probably in large part due to how much the game has changed since Steve Young was playing. You know what I mean? Like back then it was like if you could throw the ball down the field and run around a little bit, you were like this great unicorn. And now that's kind of the standard at the further position. So I look at Sam Howell, his ability to escape, and I'm like, that is what a modern quarterback should look like. It's not, you know, Steve Young. It's like that's what the standard for the position is. He's got some escapability, you know, pretty good runner for the NFL game. Not like he's going to be in college, I don't think. But I think the thing that jumps out is the arm talent, right? The arm mm-hmm. strength, the ball velocity, the, anticipa- the anticipation on his throws, the chemistry he's developed with those guys in the receiver room. So I- I'm very excited for Sam, you know, but I'm all also kind of trying to temper my excitement because I know he's he's essentially a rookie you know obviously he's a second year guy but a rookie in this offense first time really thrown for an extensive period of time with these receivers do I think he can do it after watching preseason and training camp yeah I do but I'm also kind of like in the back of my mind like Logan like you've been you've covered you've covered the NFL for three years you played the NFL for 10 you know how rookie quarterbacks adjust like there's going to be some some a learning curve you know and I, I, I expect to see some of that I think you saw some of that in the preseason with how he handled you know, blitz looks and and not identifying when he's hot and when he's not. And I think he's going to work on that. He seems like that's one thing I will say about Sam that I really, really have, have grown to admire about the process is that he seems like a guy who is super uh, driven to be better. And I think if you mm-hmm. have that, like that, that, that counts for a lot in terms of coming along as a, as an NFL football player. Um, next question is, um, is this a playoff team in, in, in your opinion? You know, everyone's been asking me that. And one thing I want to say is like there, everyone is into this, you know, media at this time of year is in the prediction business, right? I don't like predicting. I like looking at analytics and data (laughs) and saying what's going on, right? So what I will say is that when you look around the division, for example, I think the Philadelphia Eagles are very good. I think they might've regressed slightly. You know, they lost their offensive and defensive coordinator. I think you look at um, Dallas, I think they're probably up slightly with the addition of Dalvin Cook's and um and Gilmore in the secondary I think that that probably helps them out and you know I think the Giants are kind of a perfect example of what it means to regress right but as, as we know like last year you know Phil, uh, everyone thought the Giants were going to lose lose the division but they ended up being a very well coached football team and they won more games than they should have so what I'm going to say is I think this roster has the potential to make it to the playoffs but it depends on a couple of factors, right? It depends on that defensive line coming together, the way we think it's going to come together. Does the back end of this defense continue to play like they did in training camp and preseason? Does Jamin Davis take a step forward? I think he's ready to, if, if everything happens as it should with the legal stuff. Um, I look at the offense, and I think the offensive line is better than people think nationally. And I think a lot, a large a reason for that is the coaching and how EB utilizes their skill set. I think the the skill position guys are great. You know, Terry, Jahan. Yami taking a step. Curtis Samuel, I think, can be a huge feature of this offense. The running backs are great. Gibson, um, Robinson. You know, like they're it's it's crazy talking about this team because they have so much talent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's really <laughs> kind of predicated on where Sam Howell is and mm-hmm. can the defense um, support him? You know, can the offense do enough where the defense isn't totally outplaying him? But it, can they keep the scores tight? Can they lean on the defense Sam, so Sam Howell doesn't have to win games? So I think the roadmap is there. I think it is, but again, like you're you're saying a lot of things have to come together. Sam's got to develop, Chase has got to be healthy, offensive line's got to play the way I think they can play, right? So it's not a for sure thing, but not that's that's my whole point. It's like nothing this time of year as you use is like a for sure thing. It's like it's still I want to see real football games be played, I think would, would be my point. Yeah, exactly. Um now we got questions coming. I don't want to skip anybody, so there's gonna be up and down, up and down. So now we're going to we're going to the wide receiver room. Yeah. Uh, were 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 there any surprises and um, Dax Milne, right, the wide receiver? Yeah, was that you saying? Is that a surprise? Yes. To me, that was not a surprise. Uh, I know a lot of fans like freak out, and I think one of the things about yeah. Dax <laughs> that uh, they don't get to see is they don't get to see him every day in practice. And I, you know, you've been to a couple of practices. I go to practice almost every day. And he is very, very consistent at what he does. He has a very good understanding of how to run routes to get open. And when you look at him as a receiver, a pure receiver, he's excellent. And I'm, I'm, not, I'm not mincing words there. He's very, very good. He's like a good five, six guy. 
He can play teams. He can play your F, like your slot receiver. He can play your Z because of his route running ability and his ability to make contested catches. And he knows what to do. And I think there's tremendous value there. So, um, you know, everyone kind of gets on him for, for what he does as a punt returner. And I understand that perspective. You know, Santana Moss has been very vocal about, you know, getting mm -hmm. B. Mitch been very vocal about getting more dynamic. As I mean, I know them guys going to be very vocal about yeah, it, right? <laughs> about the return position. But ultimately, when you look at how Mike how Katzer, how Ron value that position, the number mm -hmm. one thing that position has to do is catch the football, yeah. right? They have to catch the football and give the ball back to their offense. So as much as fans want to hem and haw about that and, and people who don't go to practice every day, like Dax does not drop the football. He doesn't drop the football on punts. He's good contested catch receiver with good route running savvy in the short area. Like that guy deserved based on his performance in practice and in the preseason to be on the roster. Like, and, and I'm not mincing words about it. Like he deserved that opportunity. Right. So to me, that wasn't a surprise. Like if they kept six to me, it's the top four guys, you know, uh, Terry, Jahan, Curtis, uh, Diami. Those are the four. Pringle was kind of a late lock because of his relationship to EB yeah. and how he was performing in practice. And then it was, then it was obviously Dax and like, he was playing better than Kemp. He was playing better than Tinsley. He was playing better than all those guys, Kaz Allen. And so I know that's hard for fans to hear, but like when you go and watch practice, like he's the guy that's consistently showing up. And so I'm really glad that they kept seven because I thought Tinsley deserved the opportunity too, but don't, don't be sleeping on my guy, Dax Mill. Yeah, there we go. Um, all right. Jabril Cox, uh, was signed to the practice squad uh, today. Um, Ken want to know, you know, how, what do you think he'll bring to the team looking for a fresh the linebacker? Yeah. Yeah. You know, he was a guy that coming out of LSU, right? Is that where he's from? Yes. You know, yeah. LSU. Yep. Yeah. He was yep. a guy that I, I, I liked. Um, I remember doing an evaluation of him a couple of years ago, but he had an injury history, right? Injury history, wasn't able to stay healthy, was kind of a knock on him in college. He had a medical issue coming out, which is one of the reasons he didn't get drafted higher. Um, you know, it's it, so what I'm going to say about players who don't work out, like I liked him. My, my evaluation on him was, was pretty good. I think he could be a pretty good player. I think he's an elevation over the guys that were here prior. You know, I think mm -hmm. that's, that's nice to have a guy, an elevation piece, but I also know that guys that kick around on practice squads, they kick around on practice squads for a reason. Like, yeah, you know, how do they practice? How do they study? How do they learn? How do they take on blocks? And I think we're going to get to see really quickly, you know, how he's matured over the last couple of years in the NFL. So I know people want to say, oh, Jabril Cox should should be starting because of what I saw from him at LSU. But in my experience playing, like there's a reason he's on practice squad. Now that, that that dynamic has changed a little bit, no doubt, because it's it went from a seven player practice squad to a 16 player practice squad. So you get some really good football players on the practice squad now. But I think just kind of pump your brakes on that. I, I, the thing I want to know is can he contribute on game day? Can he get in like on teams? I don't think he's going to usurp any of the guys ahead of him. I don't think, I think Mayo's pretty well established. I think Kalik's well established. I think uh, Cody Barton, uh, you know, it has to do um, maybe grow a, little, grow a little bit in this defense. Mm -hmm. But I think Jamin, you know, like again, the legal thing's kind of looming over this whole situation, but he's looked very good in training camp and I'm excited for him for the season. So I don't think there's any, any path for him to make the field right now, but if something happens with Jamin and Jamin misses extended time, I think there's a path where um, Cox is can step in and maybe do some, maybe maybe play a little bit for the defense. Um, when it comes to EB scheme, right? Uh, Glenn wants to know without giving anything away if you've seen this game, <laughs> anything like that. Should what should we be excited or how excited should we be? I mean, I'm I'm very excited. To me, this is when I go to watch practice when I watch the games. Like this is how an NFL offense should look. You know, it's it's very detail oriented. It's very well coached. The protections have answers. The route concepts have answers. The concepts in general, the quarterback, you can tell he has based on different co uh, coverages. The ball needs to go to different spots. Um, so I'm I'm excited. You know, but there's no like magic pill in the NFL. I think that's that's yeah. a misconception. There's no magic play. There's no magic playbook. I do think this offense puts these guys in a good position to be successful. And I think EB has shown a high understanding, at least in how he, you know, preseason games or preseason games, you're not getting overly complicated defense, but you're seeing him, <clears throat> excuse me, in a situation where he can um, kind of how he's going to sequence plays, how he designs plays to beat cer certain coverages, his thought process. So I think for me, that's something that I get, um, I get really excited about quite honestly, you know, and, and again, like this offense is going to look a little bit different than Kansas city, but I think um, it's going to, what the other thing I like about EB is that he does a good job of fitting the offense, this offense to the mm -hmm. personnel. 
And I think that's something that, again, makes me excited. So it's it's the West Coast offense. And, again, I'm a little biased with that because I came up in the league in a West Coast offense, like the terminology, the verbiage. I think that's the way to call offenses. Um, but I also think that it's EB's utilization of that offense to maximize what we have here. So that that's kind of what I'm excited about. And do I think this is going to be a top 10 offense? No. But do I think they could kind of be middle of the pack pretty consistently with a rookie, with like a, a second year quarterback in Sam Howell? Yeah, and I think that would have that would that would be really really good for this this team for this for this group, and I think if you pair that with like a top ten defense, I think this team's going to be in a good spot. So, um, who do you see as a breakout player this season? Like I know we had um, Cam Curl year before, we had Defoe. Who is mm-hmm. someone to kind of look out for? Yeah, I mean to me, it's. I'll give you a couple because I don't want to just give you the most obvious guys, right? But for me, it's <laughs> Jahan, I think, is poised for like a huge year. I think when I watch practice, when I watch the games, when I watch like everything about him, he's just got a very high level understanding how to run routes, how to create separations. Like when I'm watching the all 22 from the preseason games, like I'm just like, this dude is is excellent. And I think if he if we can pass protect. He's going to find ways to get open. And one of the things I love about his game is that it's matured in his ability to make contested catches at the NFL level. Like he was excellent at that in college. There were times where I thought the physicality of DBs made that harder for him, but I think he's matured in that department. And I think he's going to be awesome. Another guy I think deserves a shout out is Cole Turner. You know, obviously with Logan Thomas's injury, like Logan Thomas was absolutely rocking training camp and offseason program. Like he looked like he was going to be that dude. Obviously, injury sidetracked him a little bit. So I think Logan Thomas could also be in this conversation. But Cole Turner, I think, is is showing fans what he showed us all training camp last year. His ability to make uh, contested catches, his ability to kind of run nuanced routes and create separation in ways that you wouldn't expect from a guy who's who's built the way he's, he's built. So um, I think that's another one. Um, running backs, I think all three, all three of those guys, I'll say three, but I think, you know, B Rob in the passing game is going to be something I'm really excited to see because he catches the ball way better than I thought. He runs the ball well. And, you know, Gibson, I, I don't think catches the ball quite as well as B Rob, but I do think that he is, um, he's in a position where um, he is in the best shape I've seen him. He's looking fast. And when you get a guy who's fast and physical like him, the ball in space, which this offense does at a high level, I think you're looking for some good stuff. And those are all offensive players. So I apologize. But I'm going to go defense now, and I'm going to say defensively, I think I'm really hoping Chase Young, maybe not a breakout year, but kind of return to form. Um, linebacker Jamin Davis is a guy that I'm very, very high on. Like, you know, hopefully it's you can, that comes across in what I'm talking about. And then um, in the back end, I think the guys that I thought had really good preseasons, Jeremy Reeves and Percy Butler, aren't going to play because the top end guys are so good. So – uh, those are some guys that I think have done a great job. And, and really, like, you know, if we're talking about a great job, like Khalid Hudson did a great job at camp. So there's a lot of guys that um, that I'm, I'm really excited to see. And, and that's the, the fun part about this year, as you know, Deuce. Like, we get to we get to see soon, right, what's going on yep. with the team and where it's those coming. guys are at. So um, just just quick thing, uh, Aaron, um, like the, the change you see me wear, the Red Zone Lab chain. I oh, have. yeah, uh-huh. Um, I have this this W and and, yeah. and Sean Taylor, and if you look in in like in the um in the commanders' offices where they have like the little name plates and all those different yeah, types yeah. of things, that's earned that um that does them. So uh, he wants to get get you a chain. So oh, all right, we, yeah. we're, we're definitely going to work on that. Make sure <laughs> you you get your say. You want you want a W or HTTC chain. I guess a W. A W is classic, right? You know, like yeah, that's... most definitely. We definitely, we definitely, um, gonna get that for you. Um, let's see, what else do we have here? I know someone had a question about what was your favorite game ever that you played in. Yep. I mean, this is gonna be a surprise because in 2012 we beat the Cowboys last game of the season. Like that <laughs> one was. I mean. That was probably one of the funnest games I've ever played in. You know, like I, I had a personally had a pretty good game. I played a physical brand of football, which I was very proud of. We beat Dallas in front of a sold out stadium. The fans were absolutely going insane. Um, you know, like, uh, you know, Rob Jackson had the pick like the last mm-hmm. two minutes of the game. I mean, it was it was so fun to kind of be. And I think, you know, maybe uh, that game was so fun because I associate it with that seven game winning streak. And mm-hmm. that was, again, I, I tell people this all the time, but that was the most fun I've ever had, ever had playing football was that seven game running streak. And I think that game really kind of 
encapsulates slash represents that moment. And uh, yeah, man, I wish I could bottle that and sell it because it was a pretty cool feeling. <laughs> what has Sam done uh, or what does he do well within Coach B enemy's offense? Well, I think the thing that I, I've seen pretty consistently from him is so like a West Coast offense, right, is designed through concept to like create space. And I think Sam, having not played in a West Coast offense, has has kind of done a really good job of understanding where that space should be in the defense and getting the ball there in rhythm and on time. And I, I, that's not something I was expecting from him, quite honestly. You know, he's this big arm guy. He's got this really deep, uh, you know, average depth of target when he's at um, Carolina or North Carolina. But I, I look at him now and I'm saying, man, he's on time. He's on rhythm. He's got a really good kind of command of what the offense is demanding of him. So I think um, I, I think he's he's doing a uh, he's doing a great job of that kind of stuff, just being on time, being on rhythm. And I think that's something that a lot of people um, maybe kind of overlooked about him. And that's something that he's he's grown with and developed in his own skill set. So the timing, understanding where the football needs to go and understanding how the concept's supposed to work versus different defenses has been pretty impressive. And obviously he's got to do it, you know, when real bullets come. But, you yeah, know, in terms definitely. of stuff that he's shown so far, I think it's looks pretty good. Yeah, and I think that's kind of the same question that um, Dustin had from OTAs, the training camp, and preseason. Um, oh, improve things yeah. that yeah that that he's seen um, improve. Yeah, um, I would just say like to your point, it's uh, to me it's the leadership, it's the command, it's like the confidence, and the, and combined with his like it's seeming like constant hunger to get better. Like the rhythm of his feet and the rhythm of his throws have gotten so much better, and the and the relationships he's built with those receivers has also improved. So he, he's done a lot, man. He's he's it's been very impressive, and you know like kind of no matter what happens this year, like he's put in a lot of work and, he, and he's put given himself a, an opportunity to be very successful this year. All right. Um, DT, well, how do you feel about the run game overall and your confidence that it will mesh well? Now, look, like the first few weeks of the, of, of training, because he's like, man, we ain't running the ball at all. What is yeah. going on here? And um, even, even the first game against the Browns, he did like six straight passing plays. I was like, this cannot be the offense. But yeah. So I, I think that, let's talk about that point. I, we'll, we'll hit both points here, but I think like it's important for fans to understand that in in the modern NFL you can't run the ball sixty percent of the time. Like the highest run percentages are in that like forty seven percent. So less so you're than saying 50. two one two 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 one wasn't possible. Yeah, yeah, that's not exactly. <laughs> I, you know, I think Ron might have misspoke on that, but it's um, but I, because of because of how complicated defenses are, and because of O line yeah. play, and how hard it is to get guys there. I will say this, man, when they do team run in practice and when you watch the preseason games, like when they run a power or a counter or even outside zone, they are moving people off the ball at a very, very high level. And I and, and I got to figure out exactly – I got to talk to somebody over there and figure out what was going on because they didn't run a single run the whole offseason. And they didn't run a, a single run for the first, like, four days of training camp. Yeah. And all of a sudden they come out and the first, the first day of team run, I want to say they gashed the defense for, like, three explosive plays. Like – huge explosive plays i thought man like they just are the combinations are clean they have great chemistry together they know where their hat and landmarks should be and i was like man like that's good ball right there that's excellent ball so in terms of what they've shown like i think they've done a great job you know like yeah. getting hats on hats like i look at chris rodriguez like look at some of his big runs and again he's working with the second group but like those are excellent holes and he's done a great job and, and the old lines creating that like Obviously, Chris Rodriguez finishes those run hard, but no one's touched him until he's four yards down the field. And in the NFL, that's huge. And when you watch practice, I see Cosme and Wiley working that backside B block together and driving big, uh, big pain off the ball sometimes. Not all the time, but sometimes, you know what I'm saying? And I'm just like, this group, I think they're, they, they're not going to get a lot of credit because everyone thinks they're kind of a bunch of misfit toys. But I think they're, <laughs> right. they're, they're going to gel together in a way, man, that um, – they're going to be better than the sum of their parts, if that makes sense. Like they're like oh, them yeah. as a whole are going to be better than them individually, and that is a testament to um, you know the O line coaches and what they've done, and obviously the guys they brought in because they've done a really good job gelling together. Yeah, like I was John Snow the first three days after that um, Browns game, protecting my, my O line. You know, like you were yeah, you were standing the by film. the wall. <laughs> Yep, yep, yep. I was I, I was John Snow. I was protecting my old line. I was trying to break down plays down when a lot of us on Twitter was talking about it and 
you know, just trying to tell them, like, if you watch these plays, like, the O-line yeah. is doing pretty well, just like that big sack. Like, that was on Sam. That wasn't on the yeah. O-line. He had time um, NFL pockets to – um, make throws for sure, but when you talk Dude, look about at you Rob, Rob, standing on the wall, bud, yeah, I, I, had to, I had to, I had to. <laughs> um, Rodriguez, uh, yeah. his vision looks great. Um, uh, B Rob had, has great vision too, but a, a few runs in the preseason is like he didn't hit the holes as Chris as we yeah. have known him to do. Is that concerning? Do you think? <laughs> um, for B Rob, you're saying, right? Yeah, yeah, um. I guess a little, like a little bit, you know, I think he's got it in the bag. I, I was a little surprised that they didn't give him more burn in the preseason. Like he didn't really play at all, you know, and um, he, after, after what he showed last year, maybe you don't need him to play that much, but I want to see him play a little bit more and get some more touches and, and kind of get in the rhythm of the game a little bit. Yeah. But, you know, I think the priority for them was probably getting Sam Howell going. And I think, um, you know, he's, again, I'm pretty confident B Rob's fine. Everything's fine with B Rob, but um that's something I'm going to be keeping an eye on, you know, if he can kind of, if he, if he's back kind of to who he was last year near the end of the year, is he healthy? He looks in good shape. He caught the ball. Well, like we mentioned, it's been good in pass pro, but not getting a ton of touches. And I just, I, I don't doubt that he's, he's going to be awesome this year, but it's something that I'm going to be watching for sure. As the season starts. Are, are you afraid if he's a good fit in this offense? I actually think after watching him uh, again, probably the first, Two weeks, two weeks, 17 days of training camp, I thought he was actually going to be maybe a better fit than like Gibson, for example. And what I mean by that is he showed a really in a couple days sequence, like four days in a row, three days in a row, where he's lined up over a linebacker, running a choice, bang, bang, yeah, winning inside. Mm -hmm. Nice catch. Running a wheel route, catching it over his shoulder. And I like Gibson a lot. I think he's a tremendous talent. He's a tremendous athlete, but he doesn't have that same type of fluid like basketball cross you over type of move right and he doesn't adjust the ball super well when it's like over his shoulder no people say oh he's a converted wide out he's an athlete that can play wide out right and can play running back he's a really good <laughs> athlete but i think b rob just showed a, a better a better toolkit for, for that skill set and i think mm -hmm. um and so i was like man b rob's gonna lead the team in touchdowns because he's gonna get a ton of touches in the red zone as a runner He's going to get a touch, a ton of touches in the red zone as a pass catcher, and he shows that he deserves those touches. So we'll see what happens because, again, like after that week, you, you kind of didn't see that again for a while. But I'm pretty confident B-Rob's an excellent fit for this offense because he's an excellent football player. All right, so we've got about 15, 20 more minutes. Let's try to get through all of your que questions. Uh, Kamish, what is the key? And Kamish is a, um, is a chef. Like he be posting oh, all right. stuff. Like he's the man, man. It's it's, it's probably good. It's like no, it's just <laughs> it looks good. Uh, yeah, I'm sure it's good. It, it definitely um looks good, and uh definitely going to try to get into the tailgate uh, to do something special for us. But what is the key to taking the next steps to get over the hump on games that are on the schedule that may be iffy to be wins? And that's probably like Denver to yeah. be like the first one. Yeah, I think that I'm glad you said Denver because that's one you kind of circle and like, where's the team at? I think for me, especially early, I'm not super concerned about the win loss record. And, and let me explain why. Like, I just want to see a competitive, well coached football team. Cause I think, like, think back to last year, right? Think back to the commanders early last year that came out against Jacksonville and was like, oh my gosh, look how good they look. And then they mm -hmm. had like three games in a row where it was like obvious the offense wasn't ready to go. And it was obvious the defense got better. It was like that Philly game where the defense said, we're here. We're ready to play football, and the offense are just like, we're not ready. I want to see both sides of the football play competitive, tough football that's going to compete down in and down out. That's all I care about because I know that if a team does that, those wins might not come in the first three, four, five weeks. Like you'll probably end up two and three or whatever it is. You know, I'm not even going to predict the record. But at some point, those teams, you're rewarded for that. And I've been a part of teams. Like the team in 2012, I was talking to Santana about this today. That's the type of team we were. Like we started slow, man. We had a rough start. Yeah. We didn't really know who you were. We didn't really know our identity. We couldn't kind of find ourselves, but we were in every game. We were competitive in every game. And eventually we found who we were. We found our identity and we just had a bunch of dudes on that team that were competitive, tough sons of guns, offensive and defensively. And we played better than the sum of our parts. And I think this team has the potential to do something similar. And I think when you talk to EB, when I've talked to him, He's just like, man, I want competitive, tough guys who are going to compete for 60 minutes. And that sounds like such coach speak. But if you get guys who do that, that 
the title tip for you, man. You know, the title tip for you. And it's about creating that environment and that culture that leads to that. And I think when you, you've been to training camp, you've heard him, mm -hmm. you've seen him coach, you've seen the detail mm -hmm. he's approached it with. And to me, that is the right way to handle this group. And I think that's going to pay dividends down the road. So I think that, I think they're an answer to the question. They're doing the stuff that's going to tip the scale. It might not show up early, but I definitely think it's going to show up at some point this season. You're going to be like, man, like this offense is way better than I thought, or this defense is way better than I thought. And this team as a whole, because of the coaching and because of the leadership is way better than I thought. Now things happen, guys get hurt. You know, it doesn't always fall the way you want it to fall. Yeah. But I, I really believe after watching this offseason, watching EB, watching Jack, Jack deserves credit too. Like they have done a good job of instilling that <clears throat> kind of mindset with this group. Um, Chase says, Chase Radar, um, he, he loves Chase Young, as you can see. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, as fans, what should we expect going into week one matchup versus the uh, car? Now, look, you don't have to show any facial expressions. You don't have to laugh at any of this. But when it comes to the Cardinals game, I've told people if we lose or almost win, it's a fireable offense. I just want to put that out there. You don't have <laughs> you don't have to react. You know, you don't have to react. <laughs> but no, but seriously though, like it's like they just giving us like they just gonna lay down, but it's still a football game, it's still any given Sunday. Uh, I will say this, and I don't this doesn't necessarily apply to the Cardinals, but in my 10 years of playing in the NFL, 10 years, there was never a game where I was like, This is an easy win. Like yeah. in college or yeah. high school, you're like, Oh, we got these boys. This is gonna be a cakewalk. In yeah. the NFL, bro never yeah. now yeah. the cardinals just cut their starting quarterback and it's like 14 days till the season yeah. starts so <laughs> they're obviously their goals and motivation this year are going to be yeah. slightly different than our motivation or the command or most the other 30 31 other teams in the nfl is going to be different than the cardinals um that being said i think i think they should win I think they they probably will win i'm not, I'm not making any predictions but like just looking at the numbers i would think that um, because the Cardinals to, to the question, like have not done, they, they are, they are in a total fire sale. They're moving all mm -hmm. valuable assets. They are building for next year. They're in the Caleb Williams sweepstakes. They have the first and second picks probably the next year's draft. And they are going to, they, they are going to next year will be the rebuilding year for them. And they're going to look like a totally different franchise right now. They're doing what Philadelphia did and they're tanking. They're losing games, increasing draft stock. And they're gonna they're gonna be a pretty solid football team in 2024. That being said, you gotta win football games like this. If you're a mature, well-coached football team that's disciplined, this is a football game you can and you should win. So that's what I would say. I, I like I don't really care what the what what Phillies or what the what the Cardinals are gonna do. Excuse me. I think there's a um, a perspective that you know, like the defensive coordinator from Philly is there now. They run a very conservative defense. I think that bodes very well for Sam. To see a very mm -hmm. kind of soft and conservative defense mm -hmm. early, a soft and conservative defense that is that is moving talented pieces off of the roster. Um, so that being said, I, I, I'm expecting a sold out sold out uh, stadium, a lot of home fans there, everyone going crazy. I'm expecting a win, and I'm expecting a defense that really fits well with a good with a young rookie quarterback. And we'll see; things can change. Um, and that's one of the one of the tough parts about playing uh, a team like this early in the season is you don't really know what you're going to expect. But looking at what Philly did last year defensively, I'd expect a very conservative uh, defense that is going to um, what's the word? You know, doesn't have the same type of talent as Philly's defense does. So I expect uh, expect that from from the Commanders. <laughs> um, Troy has a question. Uh, you, you mentioned that Jameis looks good this off season. Yep. What are your expectations for him? Um, with this season yeah for Jamin man I think he was playing pretty good football the last four games of the year you see it seems to start of slowing down for him and what the thing I love about this offseason is there's like a couple plays from the Cleveland game where you know he's not in the best position of all time but he's he's flying to the football he's being aggressive he might not know exactly what he's doing all the time he's definitely gotten better in that regard but even when he's unsure he's still playing fast and I think there's a tremendous value there in playing fast, playing physical, and I'm so happy to see that from him. So I expect him to continue to improve because he's got that mentality. I see him, his attention to detail in practice has gotten better. His attention to detail in the games has gotten better. Like, and uh, like, just as an example, there's that out route versus Cleveland. I don't know if you remember that. It was like the 
first play of the game, I want to say. Mm-hmm. And Jamin, you know, rallies and tackles it. It's like second and six afterwards. And then all the fans are like, oh, Jamin, let that go. But that back is running a choice route. So he has the option to go out or in. And if you remember last year against Jacksonville, for example, right, he, he got beat by Kirk across his face twice for big plays. And so you can tell Jamin understands his leverage. He understands where the ball's got to be forced. And I think that um, that shows a maturity. And I, and I like to see a mature, confident Jamin Davis because he's a freak athlete. And I like mature, confident athletes like that. And I think he's – he's my expectation is just going to continue to get better, quite honestly. Like everything he's shown this offseason seems to indicate that. So that, that's my expectation for him. Do you like the nickname Airwolf? I mean, my uh, <clears throat> that's that's a Sam, that's a uh, Fred Smoot yeah. nickname, right? <laughs> so because it's from Fred, I gotta say I don't like it, even though I think it is kind of catchy. You know, my guy, my guy Fred comes up with nicknames for everybody, and uh, I don't know, it, it does have a nice ring to it, don't you think, Deuce? Air, young Airwolf, right? Like it's it's kind of fun, but because Fred said it, I'm not gonna like it. Let's just say that. <laughs> cool, man. Um, so I know uh, uh Mitty had a question he was the one that asked the question about your favorite game and i thought i saw uh yeah i think that was it what was the favorite game that you um played in that was uh midi yeah uh, um are you, are you doing everything you're doing questions you're producing over there look at you doing yeah yeah doing exactly. everything, man. <laughs> uh yeah um all right jt says what area would you still improve if you were a GM? That's a really good question. Um, you know, it's hard to say exactly not knowing what the coaches are looking for specifically at each position, right? Like what kind of stylistically, what kind of thing stylistically you're looking for. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. Uh, let me think. Receiver, I think you're okay. Running back, I think you're great. Tight end, I think you're at a good spot. Obviously, Logan Thomas's health is something that um, is going to kind of loom over that position for the next couple of weeks until week one or whatever they, whatever the decisions they choose to make there. Um, defensive line, I think you're in a good spot. Secondary is a good spot. So I think that leaves for me, um, offensive line specifically. I think I like Wiley. I think he's a good football player, but you know, I wanted, you know, I played with Trent Williams. Like I want a dude who's going to change the game <laughs> at the position. So that's what I would have been looking for. And I, and I thought yeah. in this last year's draft, there was a couple opportunities to do that. But I don't think this staff really values um, tackles that way. I think they prefer the position flex, which is what they've said a bunch. Um, but I would say tackle, maybe left guard, depending on. And then um, linebacker, I would just that, – that spot is something that I would not invest a lot in because I think it's really – much like running back, I think it's really hard – not not like running back. I think it's really hard to find good linebackers because of how complicated NFL defenses are now and because of the physical mismatches that – that position presents every single game, but I would, I would continue to take bites of that apple and look for freaky guys with good instincts and see if I can make one of them hit. Because I think if you have a really good linebacker in the middle of your defense, it can elevate. And right now, given the landscape of the roster, there's just not a lot of spots that need to be elevated. And linebacker is obviously one of them. And I would say offensive line. And like I said, I've been very pleased with how that group has progressed. But in terms of areas we can get better, that's something I would definitely circle and say we can get better there. All right, Jake from State Farm. Is it uh, the progression of the quarterback or is it the OC? Because he looked very impressive. I mean, climbing in the pocket, uh, putting passes where they needed to be. Um, He showed a lot of poise. He, He just didn't look like the guy. I mean, we ain't seen him play like that since the Rose Bowl probably. So (laughs) what do you think it is with, with, with Jake from, I think Jake uh, deserves a ton of credit, man. He looked awesome. He looked awesome in practice too. You know, he looked really good, but I do think it's important for fans to remember who he's playing against. He's playing against the threes for, you know, the, the Browns, the, uh, the Baltimore Ravens and the Cincinnati Bengals. So I don't think it's necessarily like, you know, this isn't a knock on on Jake. Like he took the test that was given to him, and he did a great job. But in terms of like people, I've had a couple of people say, "Oh, should we should we have kept him over Jacoby Brissett?" And I definitely am not in that camp. I think Jacoby is a proven backup with extensive playing experience who played well in the preseason in his own right against a, a higher level of competition. And I think that experience and that um, that talent that he showed is very very valuable. And do I think Jake could get there? Possibly, yeah. But I also think, you know, Jacoby isn't under contract for next year. So if you keep Jake around for a year, let him develop in the offense, let him come around, maybe he's in a good spot next year and he's your backup and you don't need to go out and sign a, a heavy-duty free agent potentially. 
but I, I think he deserves all the credit in the world. He did a great job. And um, I'm excited that he that he's still going to be in the organization on practice squad. Yeah, me too. I'm glad he was able to get him back. Um, all right, so here's um, uh, DH. Um, um, him and Mitty had a question earlier. They're from the Breaking Command um, podcast, uh, which is a, a great co- podcast. is is, is very funny, um, <laughs> and they have some good ball talk. Um, okay. Uh, what has been the most noticeable differences in Ashburn since the change in leadership? Uh-oh. That's a good question. Nothing from like a logistics standpoint, everything kind of feels the same, you know, like in terms of day-to-day operation, but I will say there right after it happened, um, you know, and the, and the new ownership group was announced, there was an optimism in the building. People were smiling. There was a little be- uh, pep in everybody's step. And I think, um, you know, that's an exciting thing for the team and the organization. And I, and I do think that a lot of people, um, felt limited by the the, the previous ownership, and, and that that's gone now. And they can kind of the coaches can kind of focus on football. The players can focus on football, and um, they're hoping for for brighter days ahead. And I think the Harris Group will bring that. So uh, I understand their excitement. Um, Kayla wants to know: uh, Do you see Defoe taking the next step this season? Um, to four, yeah. So Defoe has been very good. You know, it's interesting because I do think there was a point in the offseason where they wanted Percy to kind of be the starting safety because Percy was he's got this great physical skill set, he's extremely fast, he's got great range. And Defoe just played consistent football every single day. And so I, I think it's kind of unsa- unfair to say that Defoe is going to break out this season because I do think that, um, he broke out last season, you know, he led, mm-hmm. he had a bunch of interceptions and, and made some great football plays playing came next to Cam Newton or camps, uh, Cam Curl, excuse me, Cam Newton. Whoa. Yeah. Got way out of my skis <laughs> there. Um, and so I do think that's something that I'm, uh, I'm excited for him. You know, I think there's a great opportunity ahead of him. I think he's played well. He's played with maturity. I think the thing that I'm going to keep an eye on is how does he mature from a mental standpoint? I think he last year relied a lot on Cam Curl and I have no information insider information to support that. I'm just saying when Cam wasn't in, Defoe looked like he was not lost, but just had a harder time with the defense. So yeah, can he kind I of agree. learn to stand on his own a little bit more? Because I think he's a very physical football player, which I love. He works hard, which I love. And I think in the, in the context of that back end group with, you know, St. Juiced, uh, Fuller and, and Forbes, like, you know, that he's, he's holding his own. He's not a guy that's mm-hmm. outclassed there. And I think that's important for people to know. Um, John Schwaller. Uh, please forgive me if I mispronounce your name. He wants to know, um, actually, your opinion on bringing in Dalton Risner. They haven't brought him in or he is in? What's the situation there? No, they know? haven't yet. It was just, you know, yeah. Yeah, like, So, hmm. again, like Dalton is a guy that I think is a good athlete, but is kind of underperformed a little bit. You know, like he's fine. Like he, he's fine. And, um, you know, maybe stylistically he didn't fit with the vision that they wanted here on the offensive line. You know, and then when you look at guys and what they, what they need – it's guards, right? And I'm not mm-hmm. sure, you know, he's he's 25 years old. He's like a second-year guy, third-year guy. I don't remember exactly what. It's been a while since I've done my Dalton Reisner research. But, um, <laughs> like, does he elevate you over Sadiq Charles or Chris Paul? I don't know. I, I, and I think Sadiq's had a pretty good offseason, and so is Chris Paul. Like, Chris Paul, man, I thought was going to be starting here. And then all of a sudden, Sadiq gets healthy from the calf and is kind of back at it you know, with a vengeance. So I, I think those guys are playing better ball than people want to give them credit for. So I don't know if there's, there needs to be an urgency to go out and bring somebody else in, especially when you got two young, talented guys who, who were competing for that left guard spot. And you got um, Ricky Stromberg, who's, who's been awesome at guard. You know, he, I thought he was only going to play center, but he's coming to guard. Yeah. And played I'm good excited. Football. I'm so you got three that. dudes in there that are <laughs> playing good, like very, very solid football in the context of this offense. And I think that is something that um, should not be slept on in terms of people asking if you need to bring somebody else in. <laughs> he said, get your Cardinals Drake May jersey. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have about 10 more minutes, Logan. Is that, okay. is that good? About 10 more minutes. Um, Kamish, uh, Logan, if we continue on this trajectory with culture change, well coached team, drafting well, grooming our own players, et cetera, where do you see this team in the next two to three seasons? Yeah, I mean, I think, man, like the addition of EB this offseason, I think really, really was very powerful for the team culture here. Because I think for the large part, the culture, the team, the, the players are, are remain largely the same. You know, you brought in a couple guys, but man, I look at 
the the attention to detail, the passion, the coaching. And I thought, man, like that dude has has changed has has changed us in a way that I thought couldn't be changed. So to answer that question, if EB sticks around for two or three years, I think this organization is going to be in a really good spot. Now, will he do that? I don't know. And I also think another big factor to consider, and I'm not saying any any surprises here, is where is Sam Howell's development? And I am very confident after watching him that he's going to be a a serviceable pro in the NFL. But can he take that next next step and be a top 15 guy, be a top 12 guy, be a top 10 guy? Because as you know, like when you are um, good teams have good quarterbacks. And so right. if he if he develops, then in two and three years, man, we're going to be a perennial playoff team. And we've got good coaching and, and, we're, and we're improving. I think all that stuff is on the table. It's just those are some big ifs. So, you know, we'll see. Um, Steve wants to know what is Cole Turner's ceiling in EB's offense? Ceiling, ceilings and floors. It's always fun to talk about. <laughs> he's, he, I don't think he's ever going to be Travis or Kelsey. roofs yeah. or roofs like Jordan, right? <laughs> um, I don't think this he's ever going to be a Travis Kelsey, for example. Travis Kelsey is the best tight end maybe in the history of the NFL. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do think there's a lot of potential for him. Like in the in the Baltimore game when he caught that, it's like a 17 yard comeback on a corner, and I know it's a backup corner, but when he did that, I was like, man. That's a very unique skill set for a very unique body type and a guy who catches the football well. So, you know, can he be a really good pro? Absolutely, man. And, and ceilings are funny, like, because it's all potential based. Like, right. does he have the potential in a high volume offense that features the tight end to be a top five, top seven tight end? Sure. Right. Because he catches the football that way. But I'm not sure they're going to feature him that way. And that's not a knock against him. That's just there's a lot of other weapons here. So I do think he can be very, very talented. I think also Logan Thomas is going to steal a lot of those touches. But I think he's a talented guy with a ton of upside and um, and someone I'm excited to see. But, you know, that someone I'm excited to see, like, grow and develop and, and mature. And as he gets more confident, you know, does he get those situational targets on third down or in the red zone? And, and that would just show the staff's growing more and more confident in him and his skill set. So um, I think ceiling, I don't know exactly what it is for this season. I think he's going to be a good football player. And and that's what you want from a fifth round pick from last year. Most definitely. Um, let's see who we got. Uh, Kayla loves Defo, boy. She just asking all about Defo. Yeah, she loves Defo. Like if you heard the players talking about like a, a crazy lady at camp screaming, ah! that was Kayla. <laughs> I haven't heard that, <laughs> she but she took a picture with him. Kayla oh. loves her some some Defo. Um, I think you kind of answered this question about uh, the tight ends and what for us to look forward to um, in EB's um, EB simp, uh, big simple. Is that man? Him, you're but. getting lit up here, bud. These are a ton of comments. Good for yeah. you. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, Logan is a good dude. Yep, yes, he is. Thank you. Now, look, like, like I keep telling you, like. We've been like we have a lot of spaces host that's in 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 the chat now all of it like host space, um you got Glenn Trail you got Terrence you uh, commission host some spaces Kayla had a big space with with Fred Smoot joint, um one time, and um, you know I've been trying to get you on Twitter for for so long <laughs> still working on it, um but they know your goal like whatever Logan say that's what it is, it's uh it's stamped for me. Uh, they all know how I feel about Logan and the. Uh, oh, so if we talk you. about some and somebody have watched Take Command before I did, they be like, "Well, Logan said," and then <laughs> I, I, I just shut up, right? <laughs> so running, dope. Well, I'm not always it. right, but like, <laughs> and, you know, I'm, I'm being optimistic because it's the time to be optimistic, yeah, right? So definitely. we'll see. But yeah, man, I, I appreciate that, dude. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we already know how you feel about Dax Mill, so I love Dax Mill now because Logan loves. <laughs> I mean, Dax you don't need Mill. to love Dax Mill, but I think you need to give Dax his, his props. You know, like he's he's a good he's good as maybe a strong word, but he's a, he's an NFL receiver that has a role on this team as well. I'm gonna say most most definitely. Um, and th- this guy right here, right? He has been a Dax lover for two years. He loves Dax. Can't Dax can't do anything wrong. So okay, CJ. <laughs> he's good all right so i'm glad you you, you feeling better now well that uh, do you think dax so. could elevate the receiver room that's a pretty pretty bold question right there <laughs> pretty bold question <laughs> like um like you have i don't know do you need to elevate the receiver room like holy cow you've got three awesome guys at the top you've got uh Deami brown and you've got byron pringle and i think dax is like slots in there 
somewhere near the bottom and a guy that can give you some reps in a game, you know, in the situations that require his skill set. Um, but you know, he's never, he's not going to beat out like Diami or Terry or anything like that. He's like, he's a, he's a fifth, sixth guy on most rosters. And I think he's earned that is what I'm saying. Um, so we know, I think it's a good question and you kind of apply it to Zampezi too. Yeah. Um, Pritchard, uh, he's only been with Sam a few months. Um, and sure. of course, Sam Peasy with him, with him all last year, but both of those guys, like, how do you, uh, their, their approaches to Sam, like what type of credit or what do you think those guys is, is help or have helped Sam with to improve his play? It's hard to say, honestly, I don't know. Like, is that, that's, that's, that's something that requires like you to be in the room with them, you know, yeah. and like you could talk to Sam and he might be able to tell you specifically, but I, I'm just gonna say, I don't know. And I, but I will say like seeing EB and his attention to detail, out of practice, I think is um, is something that I think is probably the bigger driver of Sam's development. But I also think you need somebody who can communicate consistently to Sam. And I think um, from what I heard, Zampezi does that at a very high level and does a great job. And Tavita, like when I've seen him, is a very charismatic dude. Like, mm-hmm. you know, and so I would imagine mm-hmm. that he's also a very good communicator. But in terms of impact on him, I would say I would assume the bigger driver is EB because as offensive coordinators spend so much time with the quarterback, but I don't want to diminish the, the role of those other two guys because they are very, very um, important in terms of translating information from the coordinator to the player. So I think that's something I would say about that. Um, when it comes to uh, adding players to the roster, um, I, I've kind of said, you know, if you're going to bring someone in here, make sure they're better than what we have. Like we have enough players with high potential and high ceilings and projects and all that. Like we want, I want somebody, if we're going to bring someone in, mm. that's going to make us better. Are, are are there any positions on the team where you can look at and say, Hey, look, maybe we need to upgrade here or there. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the thing, man, is um, with rosters specifically, I always think, man, if you can, you should. The problem with that is like, does it financially fit with your team goals? Yeah. And is there anyone available that fits your team culture and team identity? Because, like I'll say this, everyone thinks like the grass is always greener. But having been on 10 NFL rosters, like I know this for a fact. There were not 32 NFL, like Logan Paulsons, but there were 20 <clears throat> Logan Paulsons on other teams, right? There were 20 left tackles. There were, tw- you know, there are guys that are really, that are kind of journeyman players that are just around. So I think it's it's much harder to upgrade than people think because there's elite and then there's the the rest. There's the middle class. And the middle class, there's not that much difference between guys. Now, you can get guys that are better or worse for your scheme, and I think that's something that they should be looking at. But in terms of upgrading, it's really hard to build a team of totally of all-stars, right? So what, what I'd say to you is, like, Trenton Scott's a really good example. That's a guy that is, a, you know, kind of a swing tackle, like a your fourth tackle on the roster, good football player. Are there other guys like Trenton Scott around the league right now? Sure, right? Yeah. But maybe you see the upside in him. Maybe he's been here the whole offseason. He can develop, right? Right. Then he's had a good training camp and a good good preseason. So I don't want to be you know besmirching uh, Scott here. But that's what I'm saying is is it's hard to find guys at this point of year that you can upgrade. You find guys in free agency. You find guys in the draft. If the guy's not on a roster right now, oftentimes it's because they're they're just I don't say just a guy because that's that's that diminishes how hard it is to get to even that spot, but they are, they, they have their warts. Let's say that. And so I think like when people say, Oh, let's go out and upgrade right now. I'm just saying like, that's, that's easier said than done. Uh, we had a, a, how concerned are you about um, Quan Martin? I am not concerned at all. Yeah, about Quan. <laughs> uh, I like, I think for, so <laughs> to, to give some context to that, like, Quan, I think, is a physical, instinctive football player. Like, that's what shows up at Illinois. And when you watch him in practice, he does the same thing. He also has played, I don't know, like five positions in the defense. You know, he's played both safety spots. He's played the yeah. nickel. He's played Buffalo. Buffalo, nickel, and nickel are kind of the same thing. But he's been he's been in a whole bunch of different roles. So when you see the loss that he had, uh, you know, the touchdown that he gave up against um, Baltimore, it's, I think, partially because he's, he's, he's playing, I don't say a new spot, but he's, he's playing a technique versus a coverage that he might not have gotten the rep in in practice, and he doesn't know the exact leverage he should be in, right? And so, like, that happens as he kind of say, hey, <clears throat> Quan, you're going to be our nickel. So learn the nickel. And then he can learn all the little techniques, all the minutiae, and get himself right, as opposing to, hey, 
Quan, learn the safety, learn the, the strong safety, free safety, learn the nickel, and then know all of them enough to start at each one. Like that's just really, really hard to do, I think. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Now, now Deron, who, who asked that question, we were supposed to meet up at the um training camp rally that Friday and uh, get there early. He got there early. I didn't. I'm at home. <laughs> He got this suit. He was able to take pictures with Magic Johnson. He's probably the first fan outside of the organization to get a, in, to get a picture with Magic Johnson. I don't know. Yeah, could have been, been, been me, man. right? We could have could have did a cell. Could have well, you, you were in a, you were in a video that was yeah yeah the command yeah yeah the command log video yeah that was me yeah. But you came video. later or what? No, I was there. I, I came like before I was like up in the front of the line, but he was there super early. Like we was planning to get there super uh, early because we thought it was going to be like really crowded, but it ended up not being. But still, I was I, I was I, I was definitely you're hurt, jealous. You're hurt a little bit. Yeah, I, I was definitely jealous. Um, I think we're going to um, take a couple more. Let me see. Glenn, Glenn, tell, tell me, ask the hard questions. Hold on. Where, where is that at? What kind of hard questions uh, are there available? <laughs> I think it was about EB. If we would be this excited if EB wasn't here, like if we would have had, I don't know who else was out there, the the Baltimore guy or, or someone else. Um, is that so? That's the hard question. Yeah, My answer is no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I think EB like having so he he coached me in college. Uh, he didn't coach me, but he was the running back coach at UCLA while I was there. He recruited me to UCLA. The whole thing. So I've known EB for a while, and I you know when I played against him, say what's up to him, all that kind of stuff. And he is a man who is passionate, who is focused, who is smart. He's a good teacher and a good communicator. And I wasn't sure how that translate to this kind of role, but everything he's done has checked every single box. And the detail that he has presented this offense with, it's hard for me to imagine another one of those coaching candidates doing the same thing. So I look at that and I say, man, he's excellent. And he's a reason I'm excited. He's a reason that Jahan's getting open. He's the reason that Sam, like I'm giving him a lot of credit because I think he does a lot of work and I think he deserves that credit. So um, I, I wouldn't be as excited if he wasn't here. Simple <laughs> as, that, as that. So, All right. Last question. Kim wants to know NFC East, how competitive can we be? And please, everyone that's still here in the chat, start sending your thank you. So I can throw them over on the screen for Logan taking the time to chop it up with us. So NFC East, how competitive can we be? I mean, I think very competitive. This is one of the most competitive divisions in all of football. You know, there hasn't been a back-to-back -back winner of the division um, for a long time, you know? So I think that that's a huge, uh, a huge factor uh, in, in the division is just in terms of how competitive it is. Um, the answer is I don't know how competitive we're going to be. I would assume very competitive. It really, again, we have a lot of question marks in terms of where is Sam at? Like, just keep reminding yourself, like, this is the second year football player. Think yeah. about how many second-year football players come out in straight ball that were fifth-round picks. The list is not very long. And I think Sam can do it. I think he's shown that he can do it. So I'm excited for that. But again, like it's I, – I think I'm going to say we can be competitive. To the extent of that, I don't know because it really resides with Sam and really how well EB coaches and calls games. And I have a lot of confidence in EB. But sometimes it's tough when when the support when when the quarterback isn't quite ready or the offensive line isn't quite ready. I think he's going to do everything in his power to get that done, which gives me a lot of confidence. But uh, I don't know. And again, because the big question mark with, with Sam. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Logan, for um, doing this for us today. Um, you know, coming and answering some of the, the fan fan questions. You know, I definitely appreciate you. All of them, as you can see. The thank yous, and I definitely appreciate you. We're just waiting for you to get on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> but in the meantime, where can we um, where can we follow you, and what do you have coming up? Yeah, so please make sure to follow me on Instagram, Logan underscore Paulson eighty two. I try to post some of my content there. Please make sure you check out all the command center stuff. We got the command center on YouTube, which is on the commander's YouTube page. Coaches show is coming up. The pre and post game show is coming up the take command podcast please subscribe and listen to that so now that i'm saying it i got a lot of stuff going on so <laughs> <laughs> we also do uh the take command podcast there's two podcasts that's also through the team so make sure you check out that that's with fred and tana and if you like us talking together that's a great one so appreciate that yep yeah we can't wait because we got we got a few shows uh on spaces the wake and bake is one with glenn and we we, we have a few so 
I'm working on it, y'all. I'm trying to get them. I'm trying to get them. I'm trying to get them. I tell Craig all the time because Craig usually comes in with us on spaces sometimes. Look, yeah. I need your help on that side. Like, you need to work it. <laughs> <laughs> Again, thank you, Logan. Don't go nowhere for, for two minutes. Everyone mm -hmm. out there, we thank you so much for joining. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Remember, do it because you love it, not because it loves you. One beat, one sound, one heart, one love. Thank you for listening to Red Zone in the Lab podcast. Please subscribe to YouTube, Apple, Spotify, Google, and wherever else you get your podcasts. Also, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Remember, do it because you love it, not because it loves you. One beat, one sound, one heart, one love.